the Center for Innovation and Population Health, we call it the IF Center, or is it what if? Our effort is to give voice to the least privileged people in the world so that they have full voice in their care, so we can help them to change our lives. So the mission is to engineer person-centered care to make people who receive help full partners in their care. So we use a theory called transformational collaborative outcomes management, focused on personal change, not on service delivery or access to care, Focus on change, the impact of our work, and focus on using collaboration as a way of managing complexity. Starting with the assessment, what's going on in their lives, and following all the way through to system level planning so that we're using the stories of the people we serve to drive system change. It's important that people feel like they're the center of their own care. And so person-centered care reminds everybody, the individual receiving care and the person providing care, that they need to work together to make sure everything that's being done is in the service of the individual. Because that helps with their engagement, helps them feel more satisfied with the care they're receiving, and also ultimately improves their clinical outcomes. The child and adolescent needs and strengths, the adult needs and strengths assessment, and the family advocacy and support tool are part of a suite of tools that are person-centered in nature. The information from these tools can structure treatment teams and how they do their work. It can help them, for example, make sure they understand the story of the individual that they're working with. It can help them more effectively and efficiently collect information, and it can help them collaborate together and coordinate care to make sure that their treatment plans are aligned. Our Safe Systems team and the IF Center works largely with human uh, services agencies to create a specific kind of culture. We borrow heavily from a patient safety model, so we're applying safety science to create a, a culture of safety inside human services agencies. This is about creating a culture that shifts thinking about accountability away from shame and blame and towards thinking about your professionals in your organization as assets to leverage for improvement. So it brings a very specific set of tools that are rooted in systems thinking and the systems theoretical approach to looking at things like critical incidents or in the case of child welfare, child fatality. So safety culture is about bringing a specific lens to thinking about your organization's culture. So cultures can look like a lot of different things in organizations. Um, we like to think about it as a definition, as being a, a, a culture lives in an organization's habits, what you do all day, how you indoctrinate new folks into your systems, and how you solve problems in your system. So a safety culture then orients the values, beliefs, behaviors of its workforce towards specifically getting safe, effective, reliable outcomes. Currently, South Carolina is using CANS and safe systems to really propel a shift in culture. I would recommend others to work with the center because they have been locked arm in arm with us. And from the beginning, we shared with them that we were working to transform the system to advance a well-being system that partnered with children, youth, and families while also preventing further harm to communities of color. They heard that vision, they sat with us, and they helped us to develop a tool that's specific to South Carolina that really gets to the heart of what are the needs, what are the strengths, and also considering some of those structural factors that most assessments don't contemplate. The work that we are doing and that we will do with the center is core, is the crux of the transformation that we are so desperately trying to pursue within our state system. Being a parent of a child with complex issues is such an emotional journey and it is so isolating because much of what we experience as parents is not what our friends, our neighbors, our families experience in their lives in terms of raising their children. So if the impact is only that families are heard and valued and supported right where they are, then I think that's a tremendous step forward. People and families are no longer isolated and, and thought of as other they're included and accepted right where they are. Well, I think we're on the cusp of changing how things get understood because it's one thing to analyze claims data to make conclusions about policy. It's entirely different to analyze a system where you're looking at what we do with people, but you're looking at it based on your full understanding of those people. It changes how you look at how the system functions.